Blockchain.com. Hum, 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 hum. I was once accused of being a suck up. And believe it or not, this accusation was recent. The fact is, believe it or not, no matter how contrarian people think I am, the fact is, I'm kind of a big supporter of the idea of having a leader and giving them as much support as possible. But this, only in certain circumstances. The fact is, if you are in a situation where decisions have to be made very quickly and there's no time for debate, you want it to be pretty clear who's in charge. Now, it might be that you elect them in advance or you have 20 different leaders to pick from and they're all doing 20 different things. But my experience out in life, especially in the, like if you watch in the computer gaming world where there's all kinds of experimentation, possible leadership experimentation, I t tend to be more oriented towards a clear chain of command than the average player. In fact, I would think that the most squads that I've been involved in, that's a big problem is that you don't know, you get, you get all these different orders or suggestions and you don't even know who's in charge. These organizations tend to naturally gravitate towards chaos and not really any clear chain of command. And I tend to want, actually, as libertarian as I am, I want more clarity, more leadership, more uh, orders to follow, actually. And I think this is just the fact that someone like me, who, who tends toward a chain of command, the fact that someone like me would be shoved into the peaceable resistance in America, it, it's an indication of how broken our leadership system is. I mean, if my, if my natural instinct is to support a good leader, something terrible must have happened at the top to put me into the rebel camp. And of course, something terrible did. It's so terrible that it's happening at the top of every governmental structure in America, basically. But I guess there are, you know, two or three different, maybe I could say four different sort of mildly competing schools of thought in libertarian circles. Schools of thought related to what we should be aiming for if we all got exactly what we wanted, say in New Hampshire. You know, the Mark Edge school of thought is that, okay, we, we, we can have governments, but there should be a choice between governments you should have you know, maybe 10 or 12 governments that coexist in the same geographic area, and you pick the one that you want to be governed by. I guess we could call that multiarchism. Then there's this sort of, well, I guess that's similar to what I advocated that's going on a lot in video games. There's the, the uh, strict anarchist school of thought that just basically says you have sort of no government. There are the minarchists who I guess would probably be okay with a little bit of taxation as long as the government is limited to defending people from force and fraud. And actually, my school of thought is not, uh, does not really run along the lines of what I'm seeing in the computer games, and it does not run along the edges of, it, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't run along the edges of what Mark Edge is thinking. My school of thought tends to say basically, any government is okay with me, and it can even maintain the same constitutional structure if it wants, as long as it's not allowed to commit any acts of aggression or harmful fraud. Again, it's sort of the anti-aggressionist philosophy. So you could, you could have the New Hampshire Constitution remain more or less intact. You could have uh, maybe even most New Hampshire law remain intact, but all of it just defanged of the ability to tax or otherwise aggress otherwise defraud. It could still build roads or even run drunk driver interceptions. It just has to raise the money through some sort of voluntary means. This would, of course, probably reduce the size of the government pretty strongly initially, since revenue would initially go down, but it still could probably uh, continue to provide at least five or ten percent of the services that it currently provides, a market would open up for the other ninety to ninety-five percent 
Some of those services, of course, are not really in demand and would just go away. And, of course, the efficiency would go up. Under Reagan, supposedly, with all those tax cuts, well, there were some tax cuts, those supposedly resulted in an increase in federal revenue. Maybe you could see a similar phenomenon in New Hampshire if we ever got the that kind of uh, cut in taxation. It's just a thought. I guess way too much attention tends to be paid toward the ultimate goal as opposed to the way we get to the first or second stop along the way to that goal. But some of these ideas today that I'm telling you haven't really been articulated very much, so I thought I should lay them out. What are your ideas for the ideal goal? Blockchain.info's free Bitcoin web wallet. Chock full of privacy and security features. Two-factor authentication. A second password for sending coins. They never have control over your passwords or your coins. They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.